Midwifery is one of the oldest professions in the world. They have assisted in the delivery of infants since the beginning of time. This was considered women's work. In America, midwifery was the most customary practice for pregnancy care and childbirth. Midwives' job included care for pregnant women, get them safely through labor, birth babies, and provide care during the woman's postpartum period. There are many unsung midwife sheroes who have guided countless women through infant deliveries and prepared newborns to endure the birth process safely. This unidentified woman in Salome, Georgia, around 1941, sits comfortably in her home. She prepares her first aid bag and leaves home to go out on a call. Midwives have been the medical services providers in the Black community since before enslavement, bringing skills from their African roots. They have done more than help with childbirth. Their knowledge of medical herbs and treatments sustain the health of those denied access to trained medical profession. Let's meet a few. Maud E. Callen was born in Quincy, Florida in 1898. One of 13 sisters, she was orphaned by the age of six and raised in the home of her uncle, Dr. William J. Gunn, a physician in Tallahassee, Florida. She graduated from Florida A&M University in 1922 and then completed her nursing course at Tuskegee Institute in Alabama. She also graduated from the Georgia Infirmary. Callan moved to Pineville, South Carolina in 1923, a poor community that suffered from insufficient health care personnel and facilities. She set up a medical practice there. At the time, she was one of only nine nurse midwives in the area. In the beginning, Callan operated a community clinic from her home miles from any hospital. She provided in-home services to residents in a 400-square-mile venue, traveling muddy roads to serve as doctor, dietitian, psychologist, bail-goer, and friend to thousands of desperately poor patients. It is estimated that Callan delivered between 600 and 800 babies in her years of practice. In 1936, Callan joined the Berkeley County Health Department as a public health nurse. Her job included training midwives throughout the county. She taught young black women the proper practices in prenatal care, labor support, baby delivery, and handling of newborns. Her duties included vaccinations, examinations, and keeping records on the children's eyes and teeth. In December 1951, Life magazine published a 12-page photographic essay of Callan's work, documented by the celebrated photojournalist W. Eugene Smith. Smith spent weeks with Callan at her clinic and on her rounds. The photos are astonishing, telling her story and those in the community she served. What was told to America was more than Callan's story, though, but how poor people lived and the power of nursing and midwifery to affect social change. America was impressed and donated more than $20,000 to support Callan's work. In 1953, the Maud E. Callan Clinic opened and she operated it until she retired in 1971. No more makeshift church space clinics, but upgraded facilities, clinically superb. 
Callan worked as a nurse midwife in Berkeley County for over 60 years. Even after retirement, Callan continued to serve the community through her volunteer work as volunteer manager of the Senior Citizens Nutrition Council, delivering meals on wheels five days a week. One woman dedicated to the care of youth and the elderly, making a difference. Maud E. Callan died on January 23, 1990. Awards. In 1990, Maud E. Callan was inducted into the South Carolina Hall of Fame. Mary Frances Hill was born in Baker County, Georgia, the youngest of four children. She was raised by relatives after her parents died. She received almost no formal education, leaving school after the third grade. She married Ashley Coley in 1930 and moved to Albany, Georgia. After having 10 children, he left her. Needing to take care of her family, Coley turned to what she knew, giving birth nursing. After training in practical nursing, Coley apprenticed with Oni Lee Logan, an Alabama midwife. Logan practiced traditional knowledge nursing and midwifery, training many lay midwives. Her autobiography was entitled Mother Wit an Alabama midwife story. Coley was what was known as a granny midwife, using traditional practices and spirituality. She was thorough and much in demand. Coley's practice was busy, serving over half the families in the Albany area, allowing her to charge double the fee of other midwives, $30. She was able to afford a house, a car, telephone. She hired an assistant and kept ready supplies on hand for emergencies. For families with little money, she accepted in-kind payments. In her 30-year career, it is estimated that Coley delivered over 3,000 babies. Her business also included family services, cooking, cleaning, child-minding, laundering, and helping new parents file official forms and birth certificates. She was known affectionately by her patients as Ms. Mary. All My Babies In 1952, filmmaker George C. Stoney was recruited by the Georgia Health Department to produce an instructional film for midwives in training. He consulted with Dr. Mason, a local black physician, and together they interviewed more than 20 Georgia midwives. They wanted to select Mrs. Coley, but Stoney had some reservations. Coley fit many of the characteristics seen on screen depicting the Negro Mammy, and he did not want to project the stereotype. But Coley won out because of her hygienic clinical practices and skills they wanted to teach midwives and physicians in training. They stated that in her documentary film performance, Coley exhibited multiple layers of credibility as a mother, as a spiritual leader, and as a science-based health professional. Coley thus secured herself the role. For four months, Stoney accompanied Coley 
while she visited homes and delivered babies in the Albany area. Coley not only performed, but also collaborated in developing the script. Her sons and three grandchildren performed roles in the film as well. The film focused on two women, Ida Clemens and Maybelle Dudley. Ida had a typical, uncomplicated birth, and Maybelle depicted a difficult pregnancy and birth. The film included health department maternity clinic visits with white medical staff, Dr. Andrews, and nurse, Miss Penny Dixon. The film presented scenes of Albany, a rural town in Georgia, in all its authentic lifestyles of the 1950s, in town communities with contemporary houses, children playing in the yard, families collecting wood together, the paperboy delivery, as well as rural farm life and neighbors. From early clinic visits for medical examinations to preparations for childbirth and even a live birth was filmed. The training takes the viewer through realistic occurrences of a normal childbirth to a premature birth. It introduces a part of the Southern story not often told, cooperation between races for the well-being of black families. Cully is also recorded documenting essential birth certificate information. Mary Cully died in 1966. We celebrate her life of service alongside thousands who stood in for medical professionals that were not accessible for these communities. Margaret Charles was born in Utah, Alabama in 1906. At three weeks old, her mother died and she was raised by her grandparents on their sharecropping farm. Her grandmother, also named Margaret Charles, had been enslaved and practiced midwifery. As a child, the work on the farm demanded so much time that Margaret was only able to attend grammar school and dropped out of school altogether at age 16, when her grandmother died. Charles was a teenage mother with her first child. For her second child, she served as her own midwife. She seemed destined for this career path as a granny midwife. At the age of five, she had her first midwifery experience while assisting at the bedside of the wife of her future husband's cousin, Margaret caught the infant as the birth was taking place and before the midwife was able to arrive. That got her interested in midwifery, but she didn't begin training until her late 30s, being taught by Ella Anderson, a local midwife. She married Randolph Smith in 1943. He farmed and raised hogs to take care of the family. Despite her long and successful career, most of her patients were poor and paid the $5 to $15 birthing fee in produce exchanges. During this time, some black midwives in the South earned from $25 to $55 per birth. An interesting story she tells is that she served as the midwife for her granddaughter, her son's first daughter. She was also present at the birth of her granddaughter's first child. Smith is celebrated alongside other midwives as sheroes at a time when black mothers were denied hospital services in the rural South. During the period in which she practiced, 1945 to 1980, infant mortality among black mothers was deemed a medical emergency. Therefore, Smith's record was astounding. Thousands of births under primitive conditions with many poor, malnourished women 
lacking prenatal care, Smith never lost a mother and only a few infants. She oversaw difficult births, including twins, babies in the breech position, and even premature babies. Therefore, when in 1976, Alabama outlawed traditional midwifery, Smith was allowed to continue delivery services due to her experience. She received her last permit to practice midwifery in 1981. Perhaps because of her skills, Smith worked in three local clinics alongside medical doctors for 28 years, assisting in the transition to modern medicine and medical routine. Margaret Charles Smith delivered her last baby at age 75, and yes, she was recognized for her work locally and nationally. In 1996, Smith wrote a book about her life, Listen to Me Good, the life story of an Alabama midwife co-authored with Linda Janet Hone, a research scientist and board member of the National Black Women's Health Project. One reviewer wrote that this book transcended the genre of midwife memoirs by examining the larger context of class and race relations in a state that was at the epicenter of the civil rights struggle. In 2008, director Diana Paul created a documentary film about Smith's life entitled Miss Margaret. Margaret Charles Smith practiced midwifery and continued to farm at their Utah property throughout her life until just before her death. Despite health issues, including hypertension and peripheral vascular disease, Smith lived to be 98 years old, bringing forth life. The Legacy of Black Midwives in American History, Delivering Thousands of Black and White Babies, An Essential Part of American History.